I just took some washing down. I've got pegs in my hand still. Let's just see if I can use them. <laughs> Three pegs. Um, I'm sitting on two wooden bricks. I've got a blanket with me. And that's it, and on a sticky mat. Okay, come to Sukhasan. So Sukhasan is cross legs. And just reach your fingers down. Have your shoulders in line with your hips and just allow the sides of the waist to ascend, the, th the thigh bones to go down, the chest to feel open. Have the gaze directly forward, so don't look at the screen. Lengthen the back of the neck. Close your eyes. And using those hands for support, if you find that you need to put them onto something to support you, then bring some more pads or something either side of your body. But otherwise, just feel yourself sitting in Sukhasan. Don't allow the body to be overly hard anywhere, but also allow no area to feel dull. Relax the skin around the base of the eyes. Relax the cheeks. And just bring yourself into your center. Sit quietly for some time. As we sit for a little longer, you start to notice the little postural habits, grips set in. So allow yourself to release those grips. And then quietly open the eyes, softly open the eyes, change across of your legs. So try and mirror what you just did. We'll see if we can do it for a similar amount of time. I've got no watch. Allow the thighs to go down. Spine to ascend. Sides of the waist long. And then again, quietly open the eyes. And release. Baddha Konasana next. Soles the feet together, knees wide. If you can't do Baddha Konasana because your knees don't like it, you can either bring the feet further forwards. If you have a chair, you can sit up on a chair. So I haven't got a chair, but I have got this little bit of height behind me. So it's not, it's not ideal as I spin around and I sit on here and then you can do your badakonas and legs like this yeah this is oh wow yeah if you have got a chair <laughs> come onto a chair 
and you can actually you can put your hands towards your knees and you can release from the inner groins out let the breath be wide and smooth shoulders collarbones broad tongue passive the ash tree just lost a branch it's so windy <laughs> try not to be hard in the lower back so you want to feel that there's a, an energetic softness so whether you're sitting on the on the bricks or sitting up on the chair you can tell which one I prefer find yourself balanced on your buttock bones again and then release now if you're on the chair you can do this too if you're on the blocks you can do this we can do um, upper vista konasana next so I'm sitting up on my chair and I've just taken my legs wide you want to be sitting comfortably on a chair do not slip off it make sure that both buttock bones are on there okay if you feel at all wobbly or the chair feels unstable please come off all right it sounds obvious but it's those one times where you just think oh I'll just try oh no yeah don't do it spread out through the toes activate the feet okay again think sides of the waist long spine long now if you have a I said I didn't have a belt I haven't got a belt with me I was just I just this is me freestyling um, if you put a belt around the elbows and you take the arms up you can press the arms into the belt and it gets an even better lift of the spine yeah you don't have to you can do it without a belt picture you've got a belt around your elbows there we go that's all I needed to say and allow yourself to lift up keep the buttock bones down notice you may well push into the lower back if you're bendy, if you're bendy like me in that area so try and keep that tailbone plugged in buttock bones level thighs firm keep that lift and then lower the arms down find that nice connection through the elbows through the arms okay and then you can bring the legs back so just lean back a little bit grab underneath the thighs bring the legs back Baddha Konasana one more time so whether you're sitting up like this so here you can lengthen from the inner groins to the inner knees or down here quick as a flash she's back on her bricks again inner groins to inner knees use your hands for support or you can hold the big toes and allow the front of the body to feel like it's supporting the back of the body so it's not all lower back work try not to get into that habit and then when you're ready release bring the legs together and stretch the legs forwards okay so you've got Janu Shishasana next so you're going to take your um, left leg and bend it out to the left you can be on a height or you can be flat turn towards the straight leg get a nice rotation okay and then exhale fold forwards take hold of the foot use a belt if you can't reach the foot or put your hands either side and then go down elbows broad and wide get a nice length through that uh, right leg soften and levelize the shoulders navel turning towards that right leg head is down inhale come up left leg forwards open out the back of the knee again just balance out the buttock bones nice rotation in that right leg turn the foot turn the body so foot is facing up, ideally little toe is on the inner thigh, knee is lengthening back, inner groin is long on that right leg. Lift and lengthen the spine, but not just um, sort of the upper spine. I think you're lifting the whole of the spine out of the pelvis. Fold from the pelvis, exhale, go down towards the foot. Inhale, extend, exhale, down you go. 
Breathe. Relax the eyes, release the tongue. Levelize the shoulders. Inhale, pressing the fingertips into the floor. Inhale, come up and stretch forwards. Okay, now come to the floor. If it's comfortable, if it's uncomfortable, stay up on a height. And again, you can do cross legs. So if, if you're doing, so the last one is easier to do it on the floor. And even if it's just, you're sitting up and doing the leg work, yeah? If you happen to have been up on a chair for the Badakonasan, you can do cross leg Badakonasan on the chair, but you'll need a ledge then to go towards, okay? Not Badakonasan, cross leg Sukhasan. Um, but otherwise, if you're on blocks, you might have one block like that to sit on, one block in front of you, like that to put the head down on. Okay, so buttock bones level. Stretch up to get a nice length of the spine and to feel the length on the front of the body, but also so the lower abdomen is known. And notice how when you stretch up, the lower abdomen sort of, it may well draw back a little of its own accord. And then release the hands down, but keep that beautiful length that you've just created. And now go down, keeping the length on the front of the body, keeping the hips grounded and release that head down. If your head doesn't reach the floor, some kind of softness or a little brick, if you know you can just gently rest the forehead on there. And if that feels like it's too much, just bring it up a little higher. Breathe. And then be on the fingertips, inhale, come up. Change across to the legs. You may not go down. It doesn't matter. It's all about just being in your body and making the movement optimal for you. It's not always more, more, more. Okay, arms up. Like you're just going, yay, sunshine. And then keep that lift, arms down, and come forwards. Nice length of spine. Inhale, come up. And stretch the legs forwards. Sit in Dandasan. If Dandasan is too difficult to sit up in um, sitting flat, again, a little bit of a height, a foam pad, a um, couple of wooden bricks, bolster. Be on the fingertips. Take the arms up. Spread out those toes, lift up. Look directly forwards. In and knees down. And then lower the arms down. Adho Mukha Virasana. Big toes together. Knees evenly apart. Make sure you're on the center of the shin bones. Keep the bottom down best you can. Put a pad underneath if your bottom lifts up. Or a blanket. Let the head rest upon something, whether it's the floor or a brick, bolster. If your knees don't allow that bend, 
but that you're happy to be on the shins and you can stretch forwards like this. Okay, or you can lie on your back and cuddle your knees in. Now, however you are, just reach forwards. Okay, and then I want you to come up onto hands and knees. Separate the feet and point those toes back. Now bring the shoulders over the hands and really open out the thumbs away from the fingers and have the fingers coming forwards. So the hand becomes very lively, not over lively, don't stress the joints, but just so that you know you're in every single finger and that fleshy bit between the thumb and the index finger. Okay, really connect that down and the index knuckle, if you connect that down, you'll feel how that changes the work through the whole of the arm there. Now from there, tuck the toes under, make the spine nice and long. And then you're going to just unfurl your knees really to come into your dog head down. So if you're not sure, watch, unfurl your knees, spine stays long, and the legs should feel quite strong then as they open out to hold you. Press down the feet, press down the hands. Kneecaps. And then exhale, come down, back to Adamukha Virasan, big toes together, stretch back. You should feel nice and fluid in the hips. Or lie on your back. And then when you're ready, inhale, come up. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do, you're going to lie on your back. Let your um, legs be bent as you lie down, lengthening through the spine. Move that one out of the way. Stretch your right leg away. Feel the length. As you take that leg away, feel how long that leg feels, but also feel how long the side of the body feels there. And then cuddle your left knee in towards your chest. Be nice and long. All right, and then pop that leg down. Bend up both legs. So just, I just, I'm blown away by the sensation of the stretching of the tissues. It's so, as you start to become sort of more aware of just the energies through the body, just observe it. And then cuddle the right knee in towards your chest, keeping that sense of length. Okay, and then release. Bend up both legs. All right, so the next thing you're going to do, make the arms like swords. And we're going to see if we can get an equal sensation of length all the way through. So a supta tadasan, pressing the arms down, stretch the legs away, one at a time, right leg first and the left. Buttocks are active, so the lower back is sliding away from the waist. Yeah, um, so the buttocks are sliding away from the lower back. Lower back feels nice and long, but the, the ribs above are soft. So it's as if you're keeping just a little bit of containment. Um, so rectus abdominis actually starts a little higher up than we think it does, your six pack. Think about that area just drawing down just a little as you press down into those arms and work the legs. Okay, now point those toes. Feel how that feels different again through the, through the legs, through the body. What do you observe? Can you keep the softness around the rib cage? So don't let those lower ribs become hard. Let them feel broad and wide. As you breathe and press into those arms. And then when you're ready, bend up the legs. Take a rest. 
roll over onto your tummy. Now I haven't got belts. You can loop a belt around, tying the lower, the lower loops around the ankles. I haven't got a belt. So you stretch the feet away, one at a time, keeping the length, and then gently bend up your right leg. Keep lengthening the front of that thigh. Allow the pelvis to stay in its position so you don't over curve the lower back and just gently stretch through the front of that thigh. Have the fingers over the foot, so this is half Beckarsen, half frog pose. Arda Beckarsen. Keeping the pelvis level and then release. Lengthen that leg away, change your arms. Bend up that left leg. Take hold of that left foot. Pull that knee, pull that knee. Pull the foot towards the buttocks, lifting the elbow up. Gently pressurizing down onto that foot. All the seagulls are coming in because the wind is picking up. Keep the straight leg active. and then release. Let's do that one again. Okay, so just check that everything feels comfortable. Okay. Rest the head down. Beautiful long spine. Okay, keep the tailbone in the center. As you go to bend up that leg, keep stretching that thigh towards the knee. Soften through the front of that thigh. Elbow lifted. Don't worry if the foot doesn't quite reach the buttock yet. It's a, it's a process. And then release. And the second side. and then release. Lengthen through the legs. Allow the tailbone to lengthen away. Let those legs feel really long. Let the buttocks contract, uh, contract towards the hamstring. So again, they're making space for the lower back. Shalabhasan, lift the legs, raise the arms, keep the back of the neck long, collarbones broad. Grip those legs together. Little toes should feel as if they're lower than the big toes. And then come down, take a rest. And then again, long legs, reach them back. It's about length, not height. Shoulders, take them away from the floor. Shoulder blades, draw them towards the spine. Breathe. Just an awareness that the lower back feels long and extending rather than folding and compressing. And then come down. Last one, so on an exhale, everything works together. The union of Shalabhasan, the yoga of Shalabhasan. Take a breath in, exhale, lift. And if you get it right, the sun comes out. Maybe. And then release. Take some breaths. Let your feet flop out to the side. Let your buttocks spread. You can take your hands and just spread the flesh out just to encourage it to release. Thighs out. Knees relaxed. Okay, and then when you're ready, you can roll to your side. So press um, with your right, uh, left hand, 
Roll to your right side, tuck your knees up, come up to sitting. Okay, so if you sit and just have a little look this way, we're going to do dog head down again. We're just doing the one tiny back bend. So have your feet wide, have your legs wide, and just let the spine now become long. So as if the legs are holding the pose. So even if you've had to sh shorten the distance a little bit so you feel very powerful in your legs, you can do that. Press the hands straight down and you'll feel the armpits come in to support you like balloons, little tiny balloons. And then when you're ready, look forwards, just step forwards and come up. All right. Um, we're going to do just one standing pose, Virabhadrasana 2. So I want you to take the legs wide. Okay, I'm hoping now we've opened this area up beautifully. So I'm hoping your Virabhadrasana 2 will feel a little easier. Okay, so I want you to keep your left foot pointing directly forwards and just keep it stable there. Turn the whole of the right leg out to 90 degrees. Okay, now you're going to think, as you go down, can I keep my armpits over my hips? Can I allow my awareness to slide down, through, and out through the legs? Okay? So you can actually, if you, if you do it with me, bring your hands to a, um, what would it be called? Um, Addo, mm, no, down, Addo Mukhubhukshasana. My brain's gone. A downward facing um, namaskarasan. As you, as you bend the legs, start to draw the hands down. So you're thinking tissues then sliding out. And then bring the arms up into your Virabhadrasan too. Spread out the arms, press down into the feet. Because basically that's what the psoas muscle is doing. It's starting from here, but at the back of your body, and the front face of your spine, and then releasing that way. Breathe. Feel the space and then just turn your head. Look along the right arm. And then inhale, gather yourself back up again. Back up to your heart center, bring the feet to face forwards. Press down through the feet. You can bring the hands to Namaskarasana and then turn them down. That's all I should have said. Okay, turn the left toes, right toes a little, hold the left leg out to 90 degrees. It's coming to rain. Exhale, bend the leg. Let the arm come down. Think about the psoas muscle either side of the spine, lengthening down, stretching out, and then coming to your Virabhadrasana too. And turn the head. Breathe. Let the breath be wide and smooth. Open out the chest. Good strong legs. Inhale, come up. So again, gather yourself up through those legs, up to your heart center, tie a little bow. <laughs> Legs to face forwards. I'm not going to jump because it's raining. Legs together. You can jump if you wish. Stretch the arms down. If you try it again. Okay, so do you get the idea of the movement? If I hold this up, it's like down and then out. Yeah? And then out and back up. So take the legs wide. Stretch out. Left toes in a little. Hold of the right leg out to 90 degrees. So see if you can visualize that now as you go down. If you keep the blades of the feet down and draw up, think about the arch of your foot, the whole of the arch. Allow the foot to be lifted, almost like the, the foot is trying to lift away from the floor. 
and have that with a mind to what the muscular action is through the psoas muscle, what the tissues are doing, and then turn the head. And come up, feet to face forwards, second side, be in your feet, be in your legs, separate the groins, and then again turn the head. And come up, feet to face forwards, open out the chest, legs together. You can play, you can do, you've got, if you think about the psoas muscle again, now you've got that in your head, you can do tree pose, yeah? So here you've got the one leg going down, the other leg coming out to the side, again very nice. Right, it just gives you something else to, an, air, an area to work from. Do dog head down one more time. Lengthen back. Top of the legs, super firm. And then release. Come down onto your bottom, Supta Baddha Konasana. So here again, you can visualize that going down and out. Breathe. Let the body find its breathing rhythm. And then without lifting the legs, keep the abdominal area quiet, slide your legs away your shavasan. If you're not ready for shavasan yet, you can do your shoulder stand and then take yourself into your shavasan. Completely relax the face. Completely relax the body. and allow the body to release. Let the body relax. Let go completely. When you're ready, rest your hands on your belly. If you want to stay there for longer, please stay. I say that a lot. Rolling the thighs in one at a time, bend up the legs. With one even movement, roll to your right side as if you're on a spinal board so that the spine doesn't jangle the brain. Doesn't jangle the organs, doesn't jangle the spine. Carefully sit yourself up. Relax the shoulders. 
take a few breaths. Bringing your awareness back to your heart center, your navel center, that space in the center of your pose, the center of your breath. Release the head down, open the eyes, raise your face. Thank you.